Hello everyone, Joe from Central Jersey, Conrail and Inscale, and welcome to episode four. So uh, this episode, uh, we're gonna be uh, putting together my workbench and uh, organizing all my tools. Um, as you can see, we're in a different location now. I'm down in my layout room, uh, pretty much just about done getting the room ready. I got a few more boxes to pull out of here. Uh, it should be done in the next week or two and I can get bench work started. But um, in the meantime, uh, we'll go over um, putting the bench together, the work workbench, and I'll show you how I did that. All right, everyone. Um, so it's uh, March 17th. It's St. Patrick's Day, and um, looks like uh, spring might be here. Uh, so we, I decided to take this outside, maybe keep the mess down in the in the layout room, so I'm not uh, when I'm cutting lumber out here. Uh, what we're going to be doing today is uh, we're going to be starting to build the workbench. Um, so what I what I've done is. I did lots of research, uh, you know, there's there's all kinds of ready-made workbenches out there, but I just found that they were a little too big for my for my layout room. I didn't want to be taking up a big footprint, so uh, I went ahead and just designed my own. Um, I, I kind of designed it more like a desk than I did a workbench because uh, I wanted to be able to slide underneath it so I can, you know, kind of sit at it, be a little comfortable. Plans. Long, right? um, I, they're not really plans per se, they're more like a, just a sketch, but I, I kind of pointed out everything that I can, that, you know, that's pertinent. Um, I'm. I'm building them all out of two by fours because I just want it to be sturdy. I don't want it to sway. Um, you know, the other thing is uh, I, I put uh, I put casters on the bottom so that we can roll it out of the layout room when the when I need it. You know, I don't if we're doing operating sessions and it gets crowded in there, I'll just take it and put it out somewhere uh, in the basement. So um, yeah, just a little side note here. This is a little different today. Uh, never really done some outdoor videotaping, so I'm gonna try it. Hopefully the mic is uh, muffling the wind noise because I noticed the wind's picking up and it sounds like the kids at school are out at recess. So um, we'll give it a shot. I hope it comes out good. Um, so let's get started. We're, we're going to start cutting some boards here. All right, so uh, a couple a couple quick notes here. Uh, you notice behind me over over this way here, I got my trusty chop saw here. Uh, it's it's great because you can set your miters, uh, you can set your angles. Um, also, uh, the other things I'm going to be using here just to help you out, uh, a nice, a nice uh, framing square. Uh, this is really uh, great for setting down your angles, making sure you're cutting at right angles. Um, just a pencil and a um, pencil and a tape measure. And uh, hey, uh, you know, I don't want to sound corny and everything, but I I'm going to be putting safety glasses on because hey, I don't want to be losing my eye. So, all right, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a two by four. And if you look at the plans, the, the bench is going to be a 30 by 18. So I'm going to go ahead and cut the back, the front and back. Um, so I'll get two boards out. 30 inches and we'll have a little 20 minute, 20 inch uh, left over for scrap on this board so all right cutting. you always want to check your blade to make sure your blade is uh is true so first you want to unplug this unplug the saw because you don't want to accidentally fire that thing up and uh, check your gauge down at the bottom here I'm, I'm setting it it was a little off so I'm, I'm back to zero now here's a little trick that I learned you're gonna take your uh, saw and lock it down you take your framing square and put it on the back just check to make sure that there's no gap between the blade and, the, and your square, and that'll show you that, uh, that you're on true zero. All right, this way you're not actually cutting angles. Okay, so while I was off camera, I realized I made a mistake uh, on the sides. Instead of making them 18, I cut them 21. So uh, this way the the sides are one continuous board. And I don't have the joint on the sides. The joint will be in the front, and then later you'll see why. And that's because I'm going to be mounting those terminal strips on the side, and I don't have to worry about the joints. So I went ahead and did that and relayed it out on the floor. Um, so now what I'm doing is I'm going to work on the worktop. Uh, the worktop here. What I did is I got a three-eighths inch, three-eighths inch uh, piece of uh, particle board. Um, it was actually a half sheet, so I didn't have to buy. Uh, no, I'm sorry. It was actually a quarter sheet, so I didn't have to buy a whole big sheet because it gets pricey. So uh, depending on what stores you go shopping on, shopping to, uh, you know, make sure they make half half sheets and quarter sheets because you can save yourself a lot of money because. You cut a, four sh uh, a full sheet of uh, particle board just for the, a small workbench like this, and what are you going to do with the rest of it? It, it ends up as waste. So, and you know, we're trying to we're trying to save money here. We're trying to spend our, our dollars where we want to, and that's on trains, not on uh, scrap wood. All right, guys. So I went ahead and cut the worktop. Um, just a word of uh, word of advice that 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 particle board it just puts out a lot of dust. There was I had to take a break because the camera got covered in dust. So. Um, all right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to head and uh, fasten these two by fours together to make the framework. So um, what I'm doing here is I'm going to use some uh, number 12 three-inch screws to, to put the uh, boards together. Make sure uh, you pre-drill because we're going to be going to the ends of the two by fours, and if you don't pre-drill, when you put that screw in there, it's just going to blow the two by four apart. It's going to be ruined. So 
All right, um, all right. And so so uh, here's our part of work, work, work top on top. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use some sheetrock screws, and uh, I'm just going to I put a, run a bead of uh, carpenter's glue around the edges, and then use some sheetrock screws to zip it down on the on the ends. The other um, thing is make sure you you have to pre-drill this this here. You hit this with the drywall screws, and you're just going to blow it apart, and uh, you're back to square one. All and, right. So. Uh, uh, Got my legs, and here's what I'm gonna do. I'm going to, uh, I'm using carriage bolts here. I'm using uh, 15 16 inch uh, carriage bolts that are four inches long. So that'll give you enough. So um, when it goes through both two by fours, you're gonna be hanging out probably about eh, a little bit like that. So that, that's good. You don't want it too short because you want enough room to uh, put the, the washer on. All right, on. so there you got it. I got the legs on. Um, just a word of uh, advice. So uh, when I was going through my bag with the nuts for the carriage bolts, it, Looks like some uh, nice gentleman at the uh, hardware store put them in the wrong bin. So uh, make sure you check all those before you get them home. Luckily, I picked enough up. So I'm going to start working on the bottom assembly so I can get some mounting spots for the uh, the cast. Did a whole bunch of cuts because uh, I don't. I, I'm making some changes as I go here. So what I did was I want to have some kind of uh, cart underneath this that'll that the casters can bolt to, and it kind of keep the legs from flexing. Um, so what I did was I cut uh, two 2x4 two 21 inches long and they're going to sit under here like that. Okay, then I took another two, two more cuts, 18 inches, and they're going to be like this for side support. So we're going to put a, we're going to put a carriage bolt through the bottom leg here and I'll just uh, zip some uh, wood screws up to hold this. So it kind of holds it tight, right? So there's that other piece. Then I took a piece to go across the back, and I cut that. That's going to be 31 inches, and that's going to sit in the back. It's going to serve two purposes here. What that's going to do is it's going to keep the the legs, the the caster cart. We'll call this the caster cart. We're going to keep. It's going to keep it from parting As when I do my um, my pegboard. I'm gonna just take that two by four and stand it up right there on, on the back end. And it's gonna, so I left this long. And in this two by, uh, so it's gonna just go right into the, the cart, the caster cart, and it'll extend it up here. This way I should be able to get enough support where I don't have to put uh, one by fours in to, to keep it from swaying. So we'll see how that works out. Maybe I might end up having to put them in anyway. But I just didn't want to take up this side space so I can mount my uh, terminal strips here. There you got it. All right, so now the, the legs are bolted in. And let me tell you something, this thing is, other than my deck is, is wobbly, but this thing is so pretty solid. I mean, it's not, there's no twisting in it or anything like that. I could probably sit on it if I wanted to. So, um, all right, so now what we're gonna do, we're gonna flip it over. I got my cast. All right, so I got my casters. Uh, these are just, uh, I got them at the big box store. They're uh, two inch swivels and they, they were rated for 80 pounds. So I'll put four of them on there. I, I don't think we'll ever need that much weight on the workbench, but. Just, they're nice big rubber casters. I made sure to get the ones with the little brakes so that you can lock all four wheels so it doesn't twist and turn on you when you're uh, sitting at the workbench working. Um, what I'm just gonna use to attach them is I'm just gonna use these dry drywall screws, these uh, these little one-inchers. And uh, it's, it's not like it's gotta have a whole bunch of weight. You're just trying to keep it from twisting. And it rolls. So there's the bottom piece. Uh, pretty good. Now I'm gonna work on the framework at the back to hold that uh, that pegboard. So uh, we'll get work. All right. So what I've done here is I measured to the top of the work the work surface, and this bench is uh, like 30 and three quarters inches long. Okay. So what I want to try and keep the, the bench work on, under that 50 inch height. So maybe, I, if possible, I could slide it underneath the work the, the bench work. And so what I've done is measured up 50 inches to the floor is here. So that gives you roughly 20 inches of pegboard. That should be plenty. I, I don't think we'll need any more than that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and cut that. I'm going to build the framework and leave it off the bench, put the pegboard mounted and all, and then I will come back. Uh, i got to take it all downstairs and we'll assemble it downstairs. All right. So, all right, so what I've done here is I've gone ahead and uh, cut them and the uh, pieces, and then I uh, cut to the, a top member just to keep it so it doesn't uh, teeter over. Also, I'm, I'm putting a 2 by 4 because I'm going to put a shelf across the top to mount the light on so I want something to screw into. I'm using my, my uh, speed square on a back edge here just to make sure that we're all clean. All right, so this is uh, the only really nice piece of uh, wood I bought. It's a, it's a one by six. So I'm just gonna cut this across and then that'll uh, have a place to put the light on underneath, kind of neaten it up and everything. All right. All right. 
There you go, nice little shelf for the light. And then this will go right up in there. Just like that. So we're gonna measure for a pegboard. All right, so now I'll just put the framework up here and lay the pegboard across it. Just like this. And all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna use the existing holes that are there. I'm just gonna uh, use some sheetrock screws to go right into the holes. All right, so this is what you got. Okay, fits perfect. Now what I'm gonna do is I take these two pieces downstairs and I will send them down there. All right, everyone. So it's a couple weeks later. Um, I took some time to uh, wrap things up on the bench, put a few more details on it. Um, so. I'll go over and I'll show you what I did. Um, as you can see, first of all, I have a light here. So I went ahead and installed this uh, this magnifier light. And what I did is I just uh, took a block of wood and drilled a hole and stuff. As you can see, uh, I have the pegboard set up here and I got some, some things to hang my tools on. Now, right now there's no tools hanging because the way I'm gonna try to work it, we'll see how well it works out, is that I got this, this nice tool chest behind me and that's where all my stuff is. So to keep the workspace uncluttered, uh, as I'm working, I can, I can keep these racks empty so I can just throw my screwdrivers up here or my pliers up here and just keep them out of the way and keep this nice work surface empty. So I don't have room for my, my locomotives and my, my uh, buildings and stuff that I'm working on. So, and then right here you can see uh, I installed the bench vise. Um, the bench vise right now, I just got this little extra hand uh, clamped in there. Um, so. This way when I'm soldering, I can throw the board in there and just have somewhere to hold it. So uh, as you can see up here, uh, the, the the shelf with the two by six, uh, it worked out really well uh, to put this little uh, inexpensive fluorescent ballast light on there. So it just gives a little more light. So I have plenty of light down here. I went ahead and hooked up a computer down here. So when I'm doing work at the bench, I don't have to keep going back upstairs to look up reference material on the internet. I can do it right here. I went ahead and ran a, uh, a Cat 5e line down here, hooked it up to my home network, so this way I have internet access right down here, and I can also access my server to look at all my pictures and stuff. Um, so it's very handy. So that's the features of the workbench. Uh, I also put the two terminal strips. I have one on this side, I have one on the other side off camera, um, and that gives me plenty of outlets to hook tools, soldering irons, whatever power packs and I can do all my bed work right here. All right everyone, so the second part of this little uh, project that did happen down here was uh, getting all my, my tools and supplies organized. I had this, re I repurposed this old uh, Craftsman toolbox that when I uh, upgraded my stuff in the garage, I had it. So fortunately I didn't have to go buy another box. Um, but just what I did is, I, as you can see, I'm an organi organizational freak. So every drawer I labeled, so I could just look, see which tools are in which uh, drawer. I don't have to go fishing through all the drawers. So, you know, I just took the time to um, set up each drawer and uh, I spent a little money uh, getting some organizational stuff, um, these little trays and stuff. Another thing I did is I, I put drawer liners in each of the drawers. Um, they're kind of important because this way, when you open the drawer, stuff don't be sliding around and getting disorganized. The other thing is it protects the metal so you don't get scratches in the metal and it doesn't start to rust. Um, for drawer liners, you can you can go back to Craftsman. You can buy the super expensive drawer liners, or you can just go to any one of the any one of the stores. I, I mean, Walmart, the big box stores, anything, and you can get the uh, the the matting it comes in big rolls, and you can cut it down. And that's what I did. I just laid it in the drawer. So, all right, everyone. So, last topic I'm going to cover for this this episode is I'm going to tell you a little bit about the layout room. So, uh, as I've stated before, it's an 11 by 14 room. Uh, I went ahead. It's all fully sheetrocked. Um, the I have baseboard trim installed. Uh, the, the floor is concrete, bare concrete right now. I just have it painted with a real inexpensive brown um, latex uh, concrete paint. And uh, the eventual plan is once bench work's installed and uh, we're to that point in construction, I'm going to come in and put down carpet tiles just uh, so it's a little more comfortable standing here because even like right now, the floor's cold and, and you don't want to be laying around doing work on, on a cold concrete floor. Also, standing here for long periods, if you run a train, it's gonna, not going to be very comfortable on your back. Um, another thing here in the layout room, as you can see, I have one single ballast light, um, and that's tied to its own 15 amp circuit. Um, it, over by the, the toolbox before, you can see the two light switches on the wall. 
that 15 amp circuits only has that ballast light and then a second switch, which is gonna be all the lighting for the layout behind the valance. So uh, that'll be tied in and uh, they're independent of anything else that's in the room. Now, around the room, I'm looking, I have approximately eight outlets tied onto a 20 amp circuit and I'm going to be adding two more outlets when I put in this, the center wall for the peninsula. And that will just give me plenty of outlets for um, DCC equipment. So the other thing I did in here is I went ahead and uh, I piped in a 4-inch galvanized uh, a duct into the layout room. It comes from outside uh, through the bottom sill of the house and runs over the, uh, the ceiling into this room and down here. Um, I went with 4-inch galvanized pipe, uh, ducting. Uh, I also went ahead and sealed up all the joints with uh, joint tape and uh, joints, uh, joint sealer. Um, it comes in like a, a caulk gun. Uh, this way, because this is going to be for the spray booth, uh, I don't want fumes leaking out of all the joints and the pipes because behind this wall here is the family room where I have the uh, entertainment center. And I don't want that stinking like paint fumes when I'm down here spraying. So. Just took the little extra steps during construction, like adding in these extra circuits down here and adding in this pipe, just to make the, the layout room a little better. So if you're in that design phase where you're gonna finish your basement for your layout, so, some things to consider. Consider your lighting, consider your uh, electrical loads, consider if you're gonna be doing spraying down here because you're gonna need ventilation because there is no windows down. Okay, so that wraps up for episode four. I um, hope you guys got some point, uh, some tips out of this. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it. It was, it was a good video. Um, the construction video, I think it's gonna come out pretty good. Uh, I, I kinda of like what I did there. Um, so give me, your, give me your input, let me know what you think, what you didn't like. I really like to hear from you guys and uh, hope I'm going in, in the right direction for you. Um, just wanna take this, this time here, I wanted to uh, point out a little, uh, a couple of things to you guys. The, on YouTube, I want you to check out this channel, CK Rail Video. And on Facebook, I want you to check out Tehachapi Pass in InScale. This gentleman is big. Everything about him is big. His YouTube channel, huge. He's got like, uh, I think 4,000 subscribers. Um, he's got over a million views. His uh, Facebook page, he has 1,000 followers. His layout is ginormous. It is the biggest N-scale layout I have ever seen. It takes up a two-car garage, runs through a bathroom, runs through a laundry room, and into his, uh, his dining room. It, it, the construction is unbelievable. Phenomenal woodwork. Uh, he's all up, full up um, signalized, CT seek, computerized control, you name it. Go check it out. You guys will be amazed. I, I still go to his, his stuff and I'm just, wow. Uh, I wish uh, my wife would let me do that. So, all right. Um, so that's episode four. Um, our naming contest will be wrapping up here in the next day or two. Uh, so hopefully we'll have a name for this, uh, this layout here so we can stop calling it the layout. All right. So, um, I'm going to go ahead and flash them up uh, the sketch up for the workbench so you guys get an idea of uh, what wood I used and, and some uh, uh, dimensions and stuff like that. So uh, we'll see you on episode five when we're starting bench work. Uh, remember, check us out on Facebook, Central Jersey Conrail and Inscale, and also this YouTube channel, Central Jersey Conrail and Inscale. All right, see you next time.